Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father in Jesus Christ has made known unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comfort and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in Jesus' name, because truly without him, like he said over there in John 15 and 5, for without me, ye can do nothing. We can't do nothing without God. Every day we wake up, it's a gift. We got to praise the Lord for the things that he's done for us. You know, so let's take a look at this. As we always do, we're going to open up this Bible study with a, a psalm or scripture praising the Lord. So we're going to read. Today, we're going to start with uh, Revelation 7. Let's take a look at verse 9. It said, after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing and application of his holy word to our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Once again, family, welcome on in. Blessed Sabbath day. I hope everybody is enjoying this day. And this is a day to rest. Take some time off from, you know, you disconnect from the world and you just, man, just totally focus on God. It ain't nothing like that. That's what this day is for. This day belongs to God. And that's what we're going to take a look at. We're going to read about God today, as we always do. So what we're going to do, we're going to deal with the Lord was showing me something in my sleep. He was saying, man, my way is perfect. And I was like, what? I know it's perfect. I know his way is perfect. So what we going to do, we going to read about what thus saith the Lord. So let's start this out in uh, uh, Psalms 18. Psalms 18 and verse 30. Because sometimes even when you sleep, man, God will be bringing you stuff and you'd be like, oh, that sound good. And he put this on my mind. So this is what uh, uh, I'm going to present because the spirit is moving me to do this. So let's look at this. Uh, Psalms 18. Let's take a look at verse 30. It said, as for God, his way is perfect. Listen, you need to have faith. You have to have faith in God. If you want to have a, a, a comfortable life or not even a comfortable life, you want to live a life that's pleasing to God, which that is comfort. You got to have faith in him. And trust him. If he telling us all of this information, he's leaving us all of the instructions in the Bible to please him and what to do. We got to have faith and actually walk in what we believe. We got to walk in what we read. His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. How many times you didn't been down and out? You didn't know what you was going to do. You got a bad doctor's uh, uh, diagnosis. He telling you you got cancer or whatever. Next thing you know, you're going and seeking the Lord. He telling you that, that it ain't there no more. So come on. We got to trust in the Lord. Except for who is God save the Lord? Or who is the rock save our God? That rock is none other than Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. He said, it is God that girdeth me with strength. You see what David said? God is the one that gives us strength and maketh my way perfect. God is the one who does this. As a matter of fact, let's look and see what he did for King David when he anointed him king over Israel because the Philistines was after him at this time, but they're going to fall. So let's take a look at this. Second Samuel, second Samuel five. And let's take a look at verse 17. It said, but when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hole. So they was coming to seek David. Like, what's going on? They was trying to fight with David. So let's see. It said the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord. You see how they, man, that's why I love King David. This was, this brother was righteous, always seeking after the Lord. 
It said David heard of it and he went and inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up to the Philistines? So that's one thing that we always need to do. If God's way is perfect, he going to show you exactly what you need to do and how you need to do it. You just got to have faith behind the words that God is telling you. Put some action behind this. What if Noah said, Lord, I believe you and didn't build the ark? They would have got flooded out too. So faith without works is dead. If you truly saying that you believe in God and you know him, you got to walk the way that he's telling you to walk. Because your faith is an exhibition or the way that you walk in is an exhibition to your faith. It's pointing that you do. It's pointing toward you. You do have faith. OK, so it said without deliver them into my hand. So he was asking. He wasn't bold and oh, I'm about to go and knock these people up. He went and asked God. Let's see what happened. He said and the Lord said unto David, go up for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So now he said, I'm going to deliver these Philistines into your hand. Let's see how the Lord did it. Verse 22. We're going to skip to save time. It said and the Philistines came up yet again. And spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, thou shalt not go up. So he went and inquired again. He said, no, you ain't going to go up this time. I'm going to fight for you. Look at what God did. He said, but fetch a compass behind them. So see how much distance is between you and them behind on the, on the back end. He said, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. So you see how God is leading David into what he needs to do. He directed them on how to win the battle. Look, and when God is with you, you ain't going to lose. He said, and let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. You see who smote the host of the Philistines for David? It was God. He said, you're going to hear the sound of the mulberry trees rustling around. And I'm going to go out and fight against them. Man, God is awesome. Don't you know he can still do this, this, this very work, these work, works like this into 2023. He said, and David did so as the Lord had commanded him and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gaza. God fought for him. He fought for Israel. So he fight. He's still fighting for us. Come on now. Let's see what else. Because God's way is perfect. Let's go over here and look at this. And since his way is perfect, you want to stay on that straight, narrow path because broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And it's going to be a lot of people that's walking in through that gate. So we don't want to be some of those individuals that's walking in. We want to always apply our heart to what thus said the Lord. Always. So look at this. Let's take a look at verse 13. It said, enter ye in at the straight gate, at the narrow gate. This path that we walking on as disciples of Jesus Christ and his followers, this path, it can get lonely. Sometimes it can feel like God ain't there, but he is always there with you. As long as you don't leave him, he ain't going to leave you. Sometimes it can seem kind of mundane, like it get boring. It's the same thing over and over again. But I would rather have boring then to be a lot of in, in a lot of affliction and pain and torment because I didn't went contrary to God walking on the wrong path. So anyway, he said, enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. So it's a lot of people following after the ways of the world, which ultimately is Satan leading them. So, you know, I want to let you in on a secret. Whether you think you doing the right thing or whatever you're going to follow somebody you're going to follow either satan or you're going to follow god them the only two choices you got and you better choose wisely you better choose god follow after what he's telling you to do he said because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it so it ain't going to be that many that find this straight and narrow gate that's why God is telling us, blessed are your eyes for they see and blessed are your ears for they hear because the world is not going to be able to receive this. We got to hold on to this. We got the world against us. But nevertheless, hey, look, God is with us, too. So the world is fighting against God because we belong to God. So we want to always follow God's way. We don't want to do things that's contrary to God. Let's go back here to Proverbs. Let's go and see what King Solomon said about this. 
Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 4. Because when the majority of people is doing something and it's contrary to the Lord, don't give in to no peer pressure. We grown. We, we adults now. And for the teenagers that's listening in, for the kids that's listening in, don't let no other kids influence you to do something that's contrary to the Lord. Because the Lord watching you, he going to judge you. So you got to be aware of this. Be strong. Stand up for the Lord. He always, you ain't going to never be put to shame when you trusting in him. Look at this. This is uh, Proverbs 4, verse 14. Let's read this. Let's read this down to, uh, let's just read a little bit. Shoot. It's the Sabbath day. It said, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not into the way of evil men. So whatever way they walk in, you go the opposite way. He said, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. Whatever path you see everybody else walking on and they contrary to the Lord, you go the opposite way. God's way is perfect. He said, for they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. So you got some wicked people out here that can't even get no sleep unless they do somebody wrong. That's a shame. He said, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. All they do, all they meditate on is doing somebody wrong and evil. Just like in the days of Noah, when the hearts of men was only evil continually. Their imaginations was only evil all, all the time. They weren't even thinking no good thoughts. It said, but the path of the just is as the shining light. Whoa. So the path that's, uh, uh, that, that's lit up for the ones that's, Following after what thus saith the Lord, the ones that's following Jesus Christ, he said they path is as the shining light and it's going to get brighter and brighter until the day star appear or till you see Jesus. Look, the path to salvation is bright. Look, but the path of the justice is the shining light that shineth more and more until the perfect day. So as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight, things are going to get more and more clearer until we see Jesus face to face. And he going to let us know exactly what it is when we see him. So continue on this path because this path for the, uh, uh, that the wicked is walking on, look at what they got coming. It said the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They walking around in the dark and they don't even know that what they about to fall into. Come on. They about to fall right into the lake of fire if they don't repent and get off this path. As we all were on at one point until the Lord called us, he sent his Holy Spirit and got us out of that way of living, worldly living and doing things that was contrary to him. He pricked our heart. And now we stand on this path. We can't go back. And we ain't even thinking about going back. We closed the door on that. Look, it said, my son, attend unto my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Do what I'm telling you. Just listen to me. That's what God telling us. He said, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So if you keep this hidden in your heart, like David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. We're going to be we're going to be good. We just got to hold on to this. Let's look. Let's skip down to 26. Now, it said, ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Think about where you going and what you walking on. And let all your ways be established by God. He said, turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Get away from evil. Because when you uh, uh, get away from evil, now you got the fear of the Lord. Now you can get some wisdom. Because the fear of the Lord is to depart from wickedness. It's to hate pride and arrogance, evil, and the evil way. See, so that's what... That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to please the Lord. Let's go and look at something else now. Let's go and look at Deuteronomy 32. Let's see what he's saying over here. Deuteronomy 32. Because he told us to take heed, right? So we got to apply what God is telling us. Let's look at this. Deuteronomy 32. Verse 1. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Well, who is on the earth? Us human beings. So we got to listen to the instructions that the father's given us through his son, Jesus Christ, sending his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in all truth. Let's see what he said. He said, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. So it's going to make some stuff grow as the small rain upon the tender herb, as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. 
ascribe ye greatness unto our God. And our God is definitely great. He said, ascribe greatness unto our God. So he said, my speech is going to steal as the do. And my doctrine, he said, my, my doctrine is going to drop as the rain. So what does rain do? It makes things grow. So we got to remember this. And not only that, when you look at, when you look at this here, 2 Timothy 3, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So God is showing us how to be perfect through his instructions that he left us. We just got to apply it. So he said, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. So if his work is perfect, if you start adopting his ways and applying this information that he's telling us to our life, our ways will be perfect too. Because we working through his spirit. It's him that's working in us. He telling us what to do. He said, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth. And without iniquity, just and right is he. Everything that God does is perfect. You got to follow his way. Let's go and see something else. Isaiah 55, because he said it another way over here. Isaiah was testifying to what uh, uh, Moses had written over here by the mouth of the Lord. Let's go over here to Isaiah 55. Let's take a look at verse 8. Isaiah 55 and 8. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So, you know, you, can, you, you can't never find out what God is thinking unless he reveal it to you what's on his mind. So if his thoughts is higher than our thoughts or his thoughts are not our thoughts and neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord, we, we got to adopt his ways then because he got something way better than what we can think about. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's why, you know, as servants of God, as people who really truly trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to apply what he's saying to our life so that we can be on the level that he on. Because he leading us this way. Because eventually, like right now, we're seeing through a glass darkly, dimly lit. We don't know everything right now. We still in the dark about some things. But there's going to come a time if you continue to apply yourself to righteousness and to love the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to show us and teach us face to face plainly. So he's trying to put us up on his level. We adopted through the word of God. Did you know that we are adopted through his word? So let's go and see. You can go and look at that. Let me just let me just reference this to you. Let me just reference this to you, because over in John one, he said that as many as he has received him to them, he gave the power to become sons of God. So hang on, let me show you this. Look, John 1. John 1, in verse mm, 12, it said, But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. How did he do this? Through his word. Let me just show you something. James. Let me go to James. Let me just show you this. James. Let's go to James 1. As soon as I could find it over here. James 1. Let me put this out here too. James 1. Let me go over here in this book. This thing is skipping. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go here. I'm not even going to do that. James 1. Just be patient. <laughs> I'm not going to rush. So look, he said, this is James 1. He said, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So this is how God has adopted us through his word of truth. So now he said back to Isaiah 55 and 10. Excuse me. He said, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, it returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Because without rain and water ain't nothing going to grow, right? So the word of God is rain and water. His speech is going to distill as to do it. It's going to cause some things to grow in you. So let's see. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word of God is alive, people. And whether or not you believe it or not, the word of God is working against you either way. Because you either fighting against it and you don't believe it. 
and it's pricking your conscience, it's convicting you, or you hearing a word and you making changes in your life now. You starting to adopt the ways that the Lord told you to live by. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So God's word is not being preached in vain, people. His word is not vain. It's got, effect, it's got an effect on everything in this planet. That things that's seen and unseen, it's making everything move. As a matter of fact, by him do we live and move and have our being. Everything is consistent and made up of him. His word is holding everything together. Let's go and look at something else. Let's go and see this fruit that's going to be produced in us. Let's go and look at this. He said it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause some things to grow, right? Let's go to Galatians 5, verse 22. He said, but the fruit of the spirit is love. And remember, God is love. So this is the first fruit of the spirit that's dwelling in you. When you hear God's word, you're supposed to love him. He said, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. So these are the characteristics that the word of God produces in us. These right here. So that doctrine that we apply to our life, this is what it produces in us. He said, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. So now you, we got this meat suit or this, this flesh under control. We can rule this flesh through the word of God. Let's continue looking at this. Let's go over to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Let's take a look at verse 1. So we got to keep his word hid in our heart, family. Let's go and look. Proverbs 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine, hearts keep my, let thine heart keep my commandments. So if this is what's on your heart, you got God's word on your mind. So his word is directing you then. This is what we live in by. Look at what it does. It's got great benefits. Just as anything else that's healthy for you. It's got great benefits. He said for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. This is what the word of God does for you. This is what it creates because it keeps you out of the way of evil. That's what it does. It shows us how to walk and how to live. He said, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You're going to have favor with God and with men when you just keep his word. This is true, people. You got to have faith in it. This is why his word is perfect. His way is perfect. That's why he wants you to trust in him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. I don't care what's going on. He said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't be thinking you know what's going on. Because you don't. Trust in God. His way is perfect. We got to always seek God and acknowledge him for who he is. A God of all wisdom, knowledge, understanding, mercy, and truth. Grace, man, this is what the Lord gives us. Don't you know we right here looking at what thus saith the Lord because of the Lord's mercy and grace? This is what he gave us. I love how God be work, working for us, working through us, working with us. He merciful. He said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And when you acknowledge God in everything that you do, like we open this lesson up with David acknowledging God and inquiring of the Lord. He's going to do the same thing for us. You got to have faith in this people. He said, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So when you fear the Lord. You are going to depart from evil because you're afraid of what God can do to you for partaking in evil. So you want to stay away from that. All right. Let's go and look at something else because God, man, I'm telling you, ain't nothing like the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is God. He is God almighty and ain't nothing that he can't do. I love how the Lord just be showing us all of these instructions on what we need to do. Ain't nothing better than this. Look at this. Psalms 32 verse 8. Look at what God said he going to do. He said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. God is leading us. He watching over us to do us good when you following after him. Look, hold on. Let's just skip over to Psalms 33. Psalms 33 and look at verse 18. He said, behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. So he watching us to do what though? To deliver their soul from death 
and to keep them alive in famine. So I don't give a dog on what they talking about. A a, a, a drought is going to happen and ain't gonna, it's going to be a food shortage and all of it. Look, when you serving the Lord, when you truly fearing him and doing what thus said the Lord, he going to make sure you taken care of. I don't care what's going on. That's what we need to do. Man, our heart rejoice in the Lord. He taking care of us. This ain't nothing to be taken for granted or taken lightly. He even shows us how to prosper. Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 48. Let's see what he said over here. Isaiah 48. And let's take a look at this right here. We're just reading how the Lord's way is perfect on the Sabbath day. This is God's right. This is his words right here. He said, thus saith the Lord. This is Isaiah 48. Verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. He said, I'm the one that's teaching you the way that you, you need to go. I'm the one, if you're going to profit, I'm the one that's going to show you how to do it. Come on, man. God is awesome. He said, oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. You see how prospering and being blessed is, is contingent upon you being obedient to God's commandments. Really trusting in him. Because if you really truly believe God, you're going to do what he told you to do. He said, then have thy peace being as a river and thy righteousness as the ways of a sea of the sea. And it's many of them. He said, and thy seed also have been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. So if our people Israel would have just been obedient unto God. We would have never been cut off and our name would have still been known as Israel. Because right now, people don't know us as Israel. They know us as nigger, colored, African-American, black. Come on, man. Those are those are bywords and proverbs, just like the Lord said was going to happen. Let me just show you this, too, because he told us this was going to happen. He said that they was going to cut us off from being a nation. They was going to make our name to be ceased. They was going to make our name to cease from among men. Hold on, look at this. Let me show you something. He said, look, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 37. He said, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. You was going to be ashamed everywhere you go. The so-called African-American or the black man. He put the shame all across the world right now because he went against God. So anyway, let's start wrapping this up. Let's go over here. Also, too, they, he said this over here. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Psalms 83. Look, Psalms 83. Let me just show you this. He said they have taken crafty counsel against our people and consulted against our hidden ones. Talking about Israel. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You had all of these people right here. Edom was there, our twin brother, Moab, the Jordanians, Hagarines, I don't know who they are, Ammon, Philistines, all these people, everybody. Ishmael, he was there too. The so-called Arab, they was all in confederation to make us uh, uh, be hidden among the people. That's why people don't know uh, uh, the so-called African-American or the black man. They don't know them by Israel as a whole in the world right now. We hidden. Come on, now the Lord already said that was going to happen. Let's go and wrap this up over here, though. Let's go over here. And everybody enjoy the rest of their Sabbath day. Because this is truly a day that is very delightful. It ain't nothing like spending time with God and getting closer to him. And uh, if you're in a place where you can fellowship with each other, it ain't nothing like brothers and sisters just uh, having peace, man, with the Lord. Ain't no arguing and fighting and backbiting and gossiping, all of that stuff. Because that stuff be going on in the church, but... You know, that stuff is going to happen until the Lord return and clean up the house because judgment is going to start right at these churches. It's going to start at this house. All right. So let's look at this. What we need to do because the Lord's way is perfect. What he telling us it's coming out of the mouth of Jesus. These words are in red. What he say? He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You need rest from this world. You need rest from the things that's oppressing you and afflicting you. Turn to Lord Jesus Christ. Turn back to him. It really works. You got to have faith in him. If you got faith, the grain of a mustard seed, it ain't nothing that you can't do. Look, this is the barometer right here. I keep this right here to keep me reminded. 
keep me reminded of how much faith I need to have. And I thank my wife for giving me this because this is one of the greatest gifts she ever gave me. It helped me keep it. Keep me reminded of who God is and how much faith I need to have in him. And look how small that is. It's very small. All right. So let's look at this. It said, take my yoke upon you. I'm sorry. I said I gave my wife gave me one of the greatest gifts. My children is one of the greatest gifts she ever gave. me. <laughs> but this is this is number two right here. These mustard seeds. All right. So let's look at this. It said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your soul. So you tired of everything that's going on in the world. Go and turn to Lord Jesus Christ. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it sure is. The things that God got for us to do, it is not that hard. What are you asking us for? It just takes some determination, some perseverance. And you know what? You got to have faith above everything else. So with that being said, once again, I'm praying for everybody that's a part of the body of Christ. Everybody that's uh, uh, tuning in to this program now and later. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ Bless us and keep us. I pray that he heal us from any sicknesses or diseases that we have. I pray that he give us a heart that's going to serve him perfectly according to his will. All of the days of our life so that we can be raised in the first resurrection. I pray that he give us the strength to endure whatever trials and afflictions that we have. I pray that the Lord hear our prayer when we call on him. After we didn't humbled ourselves to him. All right. So with that being said, may the spirit of the Lord rest upon each and every one of us. I love you all so much. Enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the Holy Scriptures. Peace in Jesus name.